I'm going to do number six of the tear off. So number six is a graphing problem at first and then moves into limits and discontinuities. So this is our function. So we have tangent inverse x when x is less than zero. We have three minus the absolute value of x when zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than three, and greater than or equal to zero. And then we have x squared minus 9 when x is greater than 3. Okay? So it's important to know what our basic graphs are so we can graph these equations. So at first I'm going to take them one step by one by the other one. I draw my coordinate axis. So first tangent inverse x is going to look like tangent x but flipped around. So it's going to come from here and out, and then it has a horizontal asymptote at pi over 2. Just like um, regular tangent x has a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. Now notice I stopped it at 0. Usually this graph would continue on, but it says that x has to be less than 0. We have to look at our constraints, so I don't use that part. So that's that one. And now I have 3 minus the absolute value of x. So that is going to go from 3 here and down to 3 here. So this is 3 and this is 3. Again, there would usually would be another area here, but I don't include that because it says that x has to be between 0 and 3. And then the last one says x squared minus 9. So that is going to be half of the parabola. Again, I don't draw the whole parabola, which would be here, because it says that x has to be greater than 3. So it's very important that you look at these constraints. So now that we have the graph, I think that the hard part is over and it's pretty much easier from here. So this would be part A, is your graph. And I think on your test, as long as you plot some points on here and show so asymptotes, that should be good enough. They're not really looking for perfection. So part B says to find the limits. The first one would be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So when I look at this, as x approaches negative infinity, so when as x comes out this way, my graph is approaching pi over 2. I'm sorry, this is negative pi over 2, by the way. I'm sorry about that. Remember that pi over 2 would be up here. So it's negative pi over 2. So f of x is going to approach negative pi over 2 because of this graph here. And now they want to know the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. So we're going to be looking at this graph as we go to the left, and as it goes from the left, it comes to 0. Okay. And now we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. So because we're coming now from the right, which is the positive, we're approaching 3. So this is important. Remember, if we're coming from the left, we have to go to the graph that's on the left. If we're coming from the right, we go to the graph that's on the right. Now in the next column, you have the limit as just x approaches 0 of f of x. Now because the limit of 0 coming from the left and the 0 coming from the right did not agree, I got 0 and I got 3, those are different answers, this does not exist. Because there isn't one common number that they're approaching, there's a jump there. So say that this was 0, then it would be 0. But because this is two different numbers, then it does not exist. Okay. So then we have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x. So as it approaches 3 from the left, I'm using this graph, and then we go down to 0. And then it wants the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. 
and that's this graph. As I come down, I approach 0. So now this one, the limit as x just approached 3 would be 0 because the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit agree. That's that part. Now C. So that's why I said the graphing is the hard part because after that, you would just look at your graph. I mean, you can look at your equations, but I think it would be easier to look at your graph to find the limits. So part C says list all the discontinuities of f, and, of, f, f of x and state whether they are jump infinite or asymptote. So we're going to look at our graph for our discontinuities. And here we see a discontinuity right away. And it's going to be a jump because there's one point here and then it jumps up to there. So that is at, at x equals 0, we have a jump. And then we look again, another discontinuity are cusps. Right? So right here is a cusp. So x equals 3, but that is going to be a removable. Remember that we cannot remove jumps. Okay? And then um, part D says to find each interval on which f of x is continuous. So we're going to look at our continuous intervals. And that is going to be from negative infinity to zero, because from here to here, it's continuous. But then I have a jump. So I'm going to be going from zero to three. So I got bracket. And then I have a discontinuity, so it's not continuous, so then I have to stop, and then it's continuous again from 3 to infinity. Okay, so when you're looking for where it's continuous, it goes, it goes, it goes, and it stops, and then I have to start my interval over, goes, and then it stops because I had a discontinuity, and then I start it over. Okay, so usually once you get the graph, the rest of it kind of flows from there. The important part is being able to graph it though. So it makes sure when you're graphing it, you're looking at your restraints over there on the right. So this is number six of your tear-off.